Hey guys, welcome back to part two of working on the exhaust manifold here on the red tractor. Okay, well now that the hood's off, sitting over there on the ground, now it's time to start working on this part. At least it don't look too awful complicated. And this big fender makes for a perfect seat to sit on. Well, take that back. If you weigh about 500 pounds, I would not advise it. You would have break the plastic, but hey. If you're skinny like me, no big deal. Okay. Looks like I got uh, these two bolts here and right here. That appears to be a heat shield. So we'll get that taken off. These bolts here are 13 millimeter. Now uh, let's try this in here first. Oh boy. Well, uh, they've definitely been heated up and cooled down a few times. We'll go ahead and take that one out. Yeah, uh, that one. May I, have to, may I have to grab my impact? There we go. Not too bad. In fact, I just um, called and talked to the guy that I've taken all the in engine heads to. Let's see if I can get you sitting up. Well, you ought to watch. The GoPro is going to go crashing down as soon as I disconnect all that. Maybe I can sit you back over here somewhere. I thought. Okay, I just looked. There's one more bolt right down there, but uh, this shield piece has a notch cut into it, so it just, you loosen it up and it slides off there. So we'll take this in here off. But like I say, I just talked to the guy that um, has done all of her engine head work on the 4840 and the Alice Chalmers 7060 here a couple years ago on that one. And um, he's looking to see if he can find, through his suppliers, uh, exhaust manifold gaskets for this Cummins 8.9. And And um, I asked him... And um, he said, it, he said uh, putting, putting those new exhaust manifold gaskets will definitely um, help with uh, horsepower and that kind of stuff because all your exhaust will be coming through the turbo and you won't be losing a bunch going out the side. So that'll work good too. Okay, let's see if we can get... Oh, all right, that's 13 millimeter. I don't exactly have a good spot to set the camera at. You gotta hold it with one hand and try and work with the other. Okay, I found a spot to sit yet here on my work light stand. That'll work too. Okay, there's the turbo. And like I say, that's just the heat shield. Definitely gets pretty hot. Okay, next thing I want to do is disconnect this turbo line. Right here. I'm hoping I can just simply take and move it back.
Okay. Gonna have to get a screwdriver to pry that loose. Okay, we got this clamp here that ties this line to the top of the turbo and it's actually yeah this here's the exit so it's, yeah it's pushing air out this line goes forward through uh now let me grab you up here it goes forward down through a i guess you'd call it like a inner air cooler i'm assuming because it just it sits right below the radiator it comes back up on the other side and goes into the intake over there. Gonna get that thing all pop loose. Come on, there we are. I've already got these here loosened. I just gotta get that thing freed up. That rubber's kinda baked on there. Well, let me sit you back over here on the light stand there we go Okay, well, let me turn it around. I'm going to have to take, take that little jam nut clear off there. Okay, there we go. Pop it apart. Uh, come on, let's go. There we are. Okay, that's got that disconnected, which, which is all it needs. In fact, actually... Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Okay, there's a little bit of play in that, and with them clamps loosened up, I might be able to just take and turn that and kind of root, either rotate it up or spin it clear off this pipe. That clamp is still stuck down pretty good though, so let's see if we can pop it loose. Ah, there we go. All the years of heating and cooling's kind of got stuff kind of baked on there. I'm just going to take this piece here, clear off that way. I don't have to work around it. Come on. There we are. Okay. Just leave that clamp sit on there. Now there is a rubber O-ring. Ah, there we go. That sits right down inside that in that little groove. So you don't want to lose that. Just go and seat him right back down in there. Just like that. That way it can't go and bounce out on you and get lost. Okay, that's got that part disconnected. Next thing I want to do is uh, disconnect this line here. This is the feed line coming back there from the air filter can canister. Comes up to the turbo. So we'll go, we'll go ahead and get these pants here taken off. Or loosen up. Okay, I got these clamps loosened up. Now the fun job is where it hooks on the turbo right here. That's already loose. The fun job is though, trying to get that that, that part broke loose. 
kind of get a little skinny screwdriver and stick down in there to get that rubber off that metal. Gonna have to loosen that clamp up more to let the screw let the screwdriver get underneath it. Let's see. I got that clamp taken off. Now I'm trying to run that screwdriver around underneath there to pry that rubber and get it broke loose from the metal. Now it looks like actually it looks like galvanized. Okay, maybe I'll run and grab me a plastic hammer. Well, maybe not. I can get that thing pulled out there. That's pretty flexible. Oh, no wonder why. Clamp's holding it up. However, though, I can tell you one thing I don't like the looks of. That's getting cracked out right there. Now moving it around, I think I actually pulled it more. Yeah, I did. But it's been cracked up to that point for a long time. And of course the clamp held, held it down. But uh, yeah, now we're cracking on the side there. I think it's gonna be time for a new tube. Because otherwise, that can suck dirt in right there and bypass the air filter. We do not want that. But that thing's due for replacement. Now I want to get this clamp here loosened up. This here is the pipe that goes over, back, uh, goes down, and then comes up to the muffler coming up the side corner of the cab. Okay, there's a clamp off, so we're separated from the turbo. Now there's a clamp back there, I'm going to take it loose, and it should let this piece of pipe here, just take, I'll just take it clear off. Well I got that clamp loose and I've got this piece of pipe here taken off. Thankfully I said like a flex pipe, so that helps you be able to, because you got to wiggle it down off that piece back there. And if you can't, you can't flex it over as you pull out this way. That way you end up missing the turbo. So that works pretty good on that. Got to take this mounting bracket here off. This is what the, that first heat shield was attached to. And the reason why is it's blocking access to get this bolt out of the head. Uh, boy, that's, boy, that's a tight one. There we go. 
hopefully none of these break off. Huh. Can't beat that. Oh, thought that might let it swing over. Guess not. Okay, here's the first manifold bolt. That's just the spacer on there. Put that right there for now. <laughs> um, I may actually run and grab a little, another little magnetic bowl. Now I can put those bolts into it. Okay, that's here on the um, yeah, cylinder number six. So we get these here out, and it should disconnect right here. And then what that'll let me do is it'll, it'll let me, once I start getting this in here disconnected, kind of shift the whole thing back and then take it out. Because I'll probably just leave the turbo right on there. I should be able to access the bolts. Yeah, I can get, I can go around there and be able to access the bolts without needing to take the turbo off. closer. Switch over to the other socket. It'll be easy to work with. There we go. Okay. Now, I can sort of turn it with my fingers. Hmm. I can't turn it with my fingers, but once to turn back and forth with the ratchet, the oven doesn't want to hold. Okay, now it's getting out of there. All right, yeah, there's that one. I'm gonna go get, go get a little mag bowl, put those in, and we'll keep on going across there. Okay, I got these bolts here all take, taken out. tended to get a regular sledgehammer and a two before and pound against that it's slowly separating right here and it's just like a force fit basically Ow. hmm sure don't want to move too easy Okay, let's see what this here will do. That's better. Oh, 
guess it would help you line the shoulders up. There we go. I don't exactly... In case that thing should fly, should have to suddenly pop off there. I don't want to go down and spark on that. It's going to be tight back there. Okay, I think it's about ready to break loose. That last smack, it kind of felt like it gave a little bit. Okay, there we go. Come on. Hmm. There's a hydraulic hose tie down right back in here. I'm up, I'm up against it. And it's just it's right at the end to come loose. I'm going to take that piece off. Okay, I just slid the gaskets out of here. That's kind of an odd setup. It's like four thin ones put together to make one gasket. Right there. Yeah, now those gaskets, gaskets are good. Nothing wrong with them. Okay, I took that little cap piece off. There we go. Okay, there's the back section. That's definitely a real tight tolerance fit, but uh, you don't want much of exhaust leaking out of that joint right there either. So that's got the number five and six opened up. Now we're ready to move forward. Okay, well I just got looking here and um not know how well you can see on camera. But uh, evidently this must be uh I see two exhaust valves in number five right there. Yeah, you can't really see too well. Yeah, you see the two ports. Yeah, there's one valve. You can see that one's actually open. Move back here to number six. I get the light around somewhere. And same thing. Two valves. And so I don't know. Maybe it's a 24 valve engine. Didn't know that. Hmm. Anyway. Well, we'll go ahead and get to work up here on this front part. I'll, go, I'll start taking out these front bolts and then work my way back here to the middle. Alright guys, well I had not planned on taking this turbo off. However, to access some of these bolts back here, it's going to be easier. That way it's, it's more open I can access stuff better. It's only got four bolts holding it on top there. Let's see if this... Oh. Huh. Not as bad as I would have thought. Of course I did use... Well, I put the can... No can sitting back behind me on top of the four-wheeler. But, um... I soaked all those down with uh, that good old... that uh, sea foam deep creep. I will say that's one of the best penetrating oils I've ever, I've ever found. Oh, 
Okay, now where's that other one? It's back here somewhere. Oh. I'm gonna take a smack on it. I'll bring you back in once I get them all loosened up, taken off. Okay, let's see what we can do here. I just had to take a 90 degree all and get that rubber tube freed up off of the that steel return oil pipe because uh, I'm hoping that she'll be able to leave that on there so let's see here now ah, there we go let's see if we can tip out come up hey there we are just like that perfect All right, that'll make things a lot easier to access. And we'll set that up there. I'm actually going to take and set this over on the either the tractor step or I may just actually put it on the floor of the cab. Okay, now we're back to taking off manifold bolts. I can see number four has been spitting out because it's all black here on here on number three. However, the more I get looking at it, it might actually be number one that's spitting back here on on two, but I'm not sure because you can see there's some black stuff flowed back here on this one. But uh, definitely number four throwing out on the number three. Here the top one. Oh boy. Mm. I'm going to see if I can get a six-point socket. Change over here to the short ratchet. Okay, I'm down to the last bolt. I just grab my impact. Goes a whole lot faster. Okay, let that sit right there. Put the bolt up there. Put the impact over here on top of the tire. There we go. Uh -oh. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, before anything else is flying apart. Okay. Right there's number four. That's definitely blued through. No wonder why it was a ticking and a knocking so. Okay, here's number three. Number three looks good. Let's check out two. Hmm. 
and two looks good. It might be, it might be one. Aha, uh -huh, there we are. Well, wait a minute. Two only. Ha okay, right there's one. Uh, that might have fallen. That might have fell over from two, because one. There's four here. They're not stuck together. They, they've separated. There's four. Two only had three, and that's right here. So right there's one wing bed. Okay. Well, that's the reason why you could hear this thing a ticking and a knocking in the in the videos. Okay, we'll go ahead and take that thing out. Looks good. Well, let's see here. You know what? It might have been number one after all. Because I see some black stuff around right there. Just like you can right there on the edge of number four. So maybe that was number one. Huh. Anyway. Well, now I gotta get new gaskets lined up. Okay, there's kind of a close up. Let's see, I need to take and tighten up that one radiator clamp too. It's one to ooze. That's the one I had trouble with back there in the spring when I put the water pump on. But um the more I get looking at that, I think it might actually have been number one, spitting out right there just a bit. But you can definitely tell right there on number four. So, all right guys, right there's the manifold. I'm gonna call this and end the video. So, um, we'll see you back here for part three once I can get some new gaskets lined up. So take care, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time.